You think that Trump is is going to stop the country from heading in a communist direction? I don't think he, he can stop, but he's been like Jesus Christ saving this country, giving his life for this country. You said Donald Trump has been like who? Jesus Christ. Donald Trump has been like Jesus Christ? Yeah, saving this country, giving his life for the betterment of, his, of the people of the country. What, in what way? He's given his worth, his time. He's not on vacation like, like Biden. 40% of the time he's on, on Delaware on vacation. He played golf, like, so much when he was president. And look how much he did. Well, he played a lot of golf. Yes. As election season continues to ramp up, we're probably going to hear this blasphemous comparison more often than normal. The Democrats and the fake news media want to constantly talk about, oh, President Trump is a convicted felon. Well, you want to know something? The man that I worship is also a convicted felon. And he was murdered on a Roman cross. Before you take this historic vote today, one week before Christmas, I want you to keep this in mind. When Jesus was falsely accused of treason, Pontius Pilate gave Jesus the opportunity to face his accusers. During that sham trial, Pontius Pilate afforded more rights to Jesus than the Democrats have afforded this president in this process. Well, it's not entirely surprising that Republicans have sunk as low as they have with their devotion and unyielding loyalty to Trump. It is surprising to people outside of the MAGA cult and observers like us that the party of the so-called good Christian values would be this blind to their own supposed beliefs. If Jesus were a voter in, in Iowa, who do you think he'd vote for in this next election? I'm praying that Jesus would vote for Trump because, you know, the more recently, um, I don't think Trump was a really strong believer when he entered the race in 2016 or 15, whatever. I really see his life is changing. And now when he speaks, he points people in the direction of God and that, hey, he's not the answer, but Jesus is the answer. And President Biden goes to church every Sunday, right? Uh, you know, that's not what's important. It's your personal relationship with Jesus. If he's not living a life for Christ and following Christ, I mean, really following Christ's principles, then the fact that he's going to church every week means nothing. It's very clear that Christianity in this particular case is being weaponized against believers and used as a weapon to control populations because of how religious texts, stories, and more can be interpreted in a variety of ways, right? And used to achieve whatever political goal whatever political agenda you have. Now, don't get me wrong, religion can be used for good. We saw it with the late great Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. because he believed people should embody the highest form of their own religion, a morality, because at its best, he felt like religion would promote peace and understanding of each other. But in contrast, the Westboro Baptist Church, their use of religion was to spread hate against the LGBTQ plus community and other minority groups. We've seen the conflation of religion and politics ramp up to whole new levels in recent years. If you add the numbers together, it's four plus five is nine, and four plus seven is 11. So I think this is Donald Trump's 9-11 on his enemies. What do you mean by that? An excellent question. What could this MAGA artist possibly mean by saying that the upcoming election will be, quote, Trump's 9-11 on his enemies? Well, if you add four plus five, it equals nine. And if you add four plus seven, that equals 11. 11. And then you get another 9-11, except it's their 9-11, the deep state. Well, that didn't clear it up at all. But as we've covered numerous times before, the conspiratorial mindset leads into every aspect of someone's life once they fully abandon their critical thinking skills. They see signals and signs everywhere and in everything. But let's hear what the rest of this guy has to say. Do you think that Trump planned to be the 45th and then the 47th president to provide that it, clue? I don't know if it, uh, you know, uh, in politics, nothing happens by chance. And there you have it. It only took the slightest bit of critical thinking and a simple question completely collapsed his bonkers theory. Now, it's not often that we hear MAGA use the 9-11 tragedy in such a way, but it does make me wonder if the artist is familiar with this notorious Trump clip. Well, nobody's gotten to the bottom of 9-11, unfortunately, and they should have, as to the maniacs that did that horrible thing to our city, to our country, to the world. So nobody's really been there. I've known these people for a long time in Saudi Arabia, and they've been friends of mine for a long time. Uh, they've invested in many American companies. They own big percentages of many, many American companies. And uh, frankly, 
What they're doing for golf is so great. What they're doing for the players is so great. The salaries are going to go way up. It's absolutely ridiculous that Trump would say this at his golf course in New Jersey, promoting the Live Golf Tour, which is owned and operated by the Saudi Arabian government slash royal family. Because if you know anything about the Saudi Arabian government, 9-11 victims have brought a lawsuit against their government for the alleged involvement and support for the 9-11 attacks. And what's interesting here about Trump is that his words really don't align with what we expect out of someone representing the party who loves patriotism, who loves nationalism, and the concept of America being a global superpower. And unfortunately, well, this is far from the first time we've run into someone who appears to legitimately believe in the pseudoscience that is numerology. How would you define wokeism? Wokeism. Oh, let, me, let me let me start I'm here. Yeah, I'll get I, I'm not good at defining woke. Okay. Let him do that, but yeah. Woke is de uh, accepting everything that is evil. Uh, so, for instance, monster cans. Each line represents a six. So you got six, six, six. And then if you look on the monster can itself, uh, in the O of the monster, it has a cross. And it's got, uh, uh, it set, represents the Antichrist. So when you drink it, you've got the cross coming down. And that's... Uh, so that's wokeism yes, sort of in a yes, nutshell. Yes, in, in a nutshell. It's accepting everything that's evil as good. That is legitimately one of the dumbest conspiracy theories I've ever heard. There are some conspiracy theories where, yes, you can understand how a person arrived at a certain point, even if you don't agree with them. But the logic isn't far off. This one, saying woke is about accepting all things that are evil and a monster energy drink, the branding that is meant to be eye-catching and drive sales is linked to evil because of the lines on the drink and that you're bringing up religion and wokeness. How, these are the people that we're dealing with. These are the people y'all that are voting for Donald Trump. They. The brain cells are not on. And if they, are, if they are on, they're not functioning very well. A monster energy drink is about evil because of the lines. And they represent the Antichrist. What are we doing here? What kind of indoctrination? I just, I'm asking you just for specifics. Uh, I like to graduate high school in Stevens Point. I mean, I have it on my phone. It's It's talking about gender issues and issues that shouldn't even be discussed in school and pushing young children. If it were up to my granddaughter, she would be a dog and they would be letting her crawl around on the floor and identify as a dog until two weeks from now, then she'd be a cat. And they're letting children transition or telling them to keep it from their parents and pushing them to get gender reaffirming care and keep it a secret from their parents, that's not school. And that's happening at school? There are cases uh, specifically? Uh, all over the United States. And we are fighting school boards left and right.